thank you for coming back to my channel. If you're new here, I'm Stephanie, and I know a lot of you guys have come to my channel through my unboxing of my air fryer from last year. If you guys wanna check that video out, I'll leave a link up above here, and then you can go watch that one if you would like. But I needed to get another air fryer just because mine broke and I'm gonna be in the process of getting a warranty done on that one. I did get that one through Kohl's and I got this one through Kohl's, but I need to go through the whole return process of getting a warranty on that and then maybe I'll come back on and um, talk to you guys about my warranty replacement. Um, my last one my sister ended up getting for me so she's gonna help me out with trying to get that one replaced and fixed just because I haven't had it you know not even for a year yet and it wouldn't work so we needed to get another one quick so I can continue to make some videos for you guys I did have a video planned for this week but it ended up not working just because of when I went to go use my air fryer, it wouldn't start. So we're gonna unbox this one and I just wanted to share with you guys my like a little bit more understanding of using a air fryer. And now my knowledge is a little bit better from my last unboxing. So we're just gonna open this up and share with you guys more about it. One of the things that I did notice in this box is mine includes a uh, oil spray bottle. I did have one of you guys talk to me or reach out to me a while back and wanted to know what their bottle was used for and we ended up finding out that it was an oil sprayer. So mine says on my box it includes an oil sprayer, so that's pretty cool. I know you guys have been following along some of my recipes, but today I will not be adding a recipe to this video. I just wanted to share some more ideas um, with my air fryer and hopefully I can help other people that are purchasing their air fryer for the first time. So when I needed to replace mine and I needed to get a new one, I went on and I tried looking around for different ones that was suitable for what we needed. A lot of the air fryers that are out there have different quart size. And if you can tell right here, this one is a seven quart. And we ended up picking up a four, or a, I think it was like a five quart. And for us, that wouldn't be big enough to use so we ended up just bringing it back right away. So there are different sizes per what you're looking for. And with ours, it says that it is, it serves six people. So for us, we have 10 in the household right now, but a lot of times we're using our air fryer for, you know, like quick stuff, just really quick stuff, quick recipes just for, um, either for fun or like french fries and stuff that we want to cook up quick or like salmon and stuff like that that we just don't want to put in the oven. So right now though I want to unbox this with you and I want to share with you guys what to expect when you get your air fryer and some of the things that you need to know when purchasing your air fryer. So I know there's a lot of places that do offer air fryers now um, I know a lot of like home good places or Walmarts or Targets and I think even like Fleet Farm and places like that all sell air fryers. It's just going to be the style that you would like. So you could get one that's more like a rotisserie style um, and these are just a basket. Okay, so there's all different styles air fryers that you can purchase. I ended up just getting another Power XL just because I've been making videos with this and I didn't want to confuse you guys at all on what I all have purchased for my air fryer because I did get a lot of other stuff that I can put in my air fryer and use with it. And I didn't want to change it up to where I needed to change everything over. That would have just been kind of a crazy mess. So. I went to just stay with the um, Power XL and I got the seven quart just because it's big enough for our family. 
So I want to unbox this with you in case you guys are new to my channel and you never got an air fryer yet and maybe this would help you out, give you some ideas on what to look for when you are purchasing one. So let's get started with that. This is what you will get in your box. I got this in last time in my other, um, my other air fryer video. And you will get like a free coupon to get some fries. And then it also talks about how you will get a bonus accessory, oil mister, and then it gives you the directions on how to use it. You also will get a fried food recipe book. You guys can check out some of the stuff in there. I think I might have made something in here. I don't remember what it was, but maybe in some of my next couple of videos, I can uh, make some stuff that's in here, but they do have a lot of good ideas. And one of the things in these recipe books, even if you just purchase one on Amazon and stuff like that, they'll tell you what quart, let's see if I can show you that. So it'll say what quart air fryer is good for that recipe and then how to you know cook that one up so if it says for a two to three quart you're going to use a half a bag and then for five to seven quart you would use a 16 ounce bag so they'll give you all of that information in here and then let's see ones and then in my other video too i talked about how it has a quick start guide so it has a removable basket I'll place the fry tray in the basket and push down until the fry tray clicks into place. So that's one of the things when you start using your air fryer, you'll notice that your air fryer will not work until your basket is pushed all the way in. So that's one of the things. So you don't have to worry about if you open up your air fryer that it's gonna continue to still working. It'll automatically stop. And then when you push your basket back in, it will start cooking again at the temp that you had it and then the remaining time left on the screen you'll i'll show you all that in a little bit but i know some of you guys already have an air fryer and you guys purchased one i think it was like christmas time that everybody wanted to get one um uh, and you guys have been using it for a while so you guys will know some of you guys maybe got a different air fryer than me and the settings are totally different but mine, when I would open my basket to check on it and then push it back in, the um, temp and everything would just stay there and then it would continue to cook down. So another one is return basket to unit, power unit on, and then remove basket. Set the basket on a secure heat resistant surface. So the bottom of the basket is gonna be hot and if you guys want, I'll try to leave a link down below for accessory kits and stuff that you can purchase. And in there is like a silicone mat that you can put down and then you can put your basket on there. So I have that um, for my air fryer and then some like containers and stuff that you can put inside just to help cook up different ideas. Cause a lot of times you can't, add a lot of liquids in your air fryer because you just have a basket and it has holes. So if you you wanna cook up like an omelet or a quesadilla, you're gonna want a tray or something to be able to go in your air fryer. So that's why I mentioned the accessory kit. You guys can go check out some of my other videos. I will try to link up above my accessory kit video and you guys can check out which one I use, but I'll have two down below, and then I'll also link an air fryer down below and then an instant pot down below also, because I do random ones of that too. So, but for right now, you'll get a quick start guide when you open up your air fryer. You'll also get a owner's manual and you can read this over. And that's kind of what I'm gonna be going over with you today is some of the stuff that would be in your quick start. So. I'm gonna keep that here close to me so we can talk about that. You need to get all the plastic and stuff off of your air fryer. Have a lot of tape pieces around your basket just so your basket doesn't open up during shipping. So you just need to take them off. And then inside your fryer, you'll have cardboard and stuff. And then I think I forgot to mention in my last air fryer 
um, unboxing video that it did come with a removable tray in mine. I know I had a lot of people question if I had one in mine and I do have one in mine. So this is exactly the same as my other one and then this is the bottom base of what it looks like. So it has all the vent holes around it for even cooking and then even on the tray it has holes and stuff on here so I mentioned in some of my other cooking videos that you can put a piece of foil in there and then you can poke holes in it to allow the air to flow through but then you have easier cleanup with using foil we'll come back to the cooking part of the air fryer because we're gonna move over to another area and then I can show you some of the settings that are on the air fryer so like I said, in this air fryer, I did receive a uh, oil sprayer. So this is what it looks like. And then it just says your max amount is what you would, where you would put your oil in there. And then you're gonna push that down and turn it. So let's look at what it says here. It says, with the Power XL Vortex Air Fryer, you never need to use large amounts of fat or oil. For added flavor, we recommend misting your favorite cooking oil on food or fry basket before cooking. The oil mister requires pumping in order to work properly. Pump the top of the oil mister three to four times before spraying. To avoid buildup, wash the oil mister occasionally. Do not fill oil past the max line. So that's what I was showing you. You can order these separate on Amazon also. And I, I don't know if it's gonna be like the Power XL one or whatever, but I'll look online and see, maybe I can share a link with you guys on where you can purchase one if you guys already have an air fryer. I just been using like a cooking spray in my basket to line my basket or to line my or to spray my food down. So I'm kind of excited to use this in some of my videos. So we'll see. You'll be seeing me pulling this out now, now that I have it. So if you're making like, um, you know, maybe a homemade chicken or I made a whole chicken in here before and I would have just sprayed it down with my cooking spray and then added my season, seasonings and stuff on top. So this time I can just put my oil in there and then cook it that way. So we're gonna move directions into another area just so I can show you some of the settings that are on here. And then some of this will make more sense as to what I'm showing you. Just because I don't want you guys confused on just purchasing an air fryer and then you don't know what any of the settings are for. So I know I've used some of the settings on some of my air fryer videos, but a lot of it I haven't really dove deep dove deep into what each one was on the screen here. So I'm gonna move you guys closer and just show you guys some of the things that it offers. Um, I wanted to explain to you guys that when you first get your air fryer, you're gonna wanna wash it down with soapy water. And I'm not saying like, like a lot of soap and water, you're just gonna wanna wash everything down just from um, having it in the box and stuff. So what you would do is just grab a washcloth, warm washcloth with you know soap and water. You're just gonna rinse it out and just clean it out before you first use it. That's some of the stuff that will um, be said in your manual. Okay, so one of the things in here, it shows that you can get a two quart, a three quart, a five or a seven quart, and I have the seven quarts. Place a unit on a stable level surface. Do not place a unit on a surface that is not heat resistant. So we just keep ours usually here on the counter, and then I kind of just pull it a little bit away from our wall, just because the air vent is back here and I don't want anything getting hot back here. So I pull that out a little bit more. It says place a tray, the fried tray in the basket, slide the basket into the unit. If the basket is placed properly, it will click into place. So what it is saying is, I don't have it clicked in right now, I do have it plugged in, but when I push it in, it's gonna pop on just like that. That's what it's saying. 
Okay, so mine says preheat, push the power button. So we're gonna push the power button. So if you wanna preheat, you, you can go ahead and do that. A lot of the recipes that I have been doing didn't require preheating. I know that some recipes do require preheating just because you wanna get your unit to be hot so that it doesn't take longer cook time. So if I were to cook up like a pizza in here, um, it might take like seven min minutes to cook, but if I preheat it to the regular temp, then it would um, cook maybe in four minutes in time. So that's a good option to have if you wanna go ahead and preheat your air fryer. Um, press the temperature increase and decrease in time. So when I go ahead and set my air fryer, it's going to turn on. Okay, we're just going to... Okay, so I'm going to turn it on and I'm going to set my temp to 375, which is on this side. And then I'm going to lower the temp to 6 minutes. It automatically goes to 15 minutes when you start up your air fryer. And I will give you, I'll show you guys. So what's gonna happen right now is because I opened it up in the middle of the cycle, it's gonna continue to cook in where I left it off. So let's push it back in. So it went still on 375 and it's just gonna continue to cook down until it's finished. So if I wanna shut it off, it's gonna shut off just like that. And then when I want to just stop this from, you know, slowing down a little bit more. I'm gonna open up my basket and it's gonna shut off. And now when I push it back in, it's not gonna do anything. So it'll just be done with cooking then. Um, it says, press the time and decrease button to set the preheat time to three minutes. If you wanna do a preheat, you would just set your temp to the recipe that you're gonna be following and then just bring it down to three minutes for that uh, preheat time, so. But you guys can read in your manual and see if it's a different cook time. I have mentioned in some of my recipes that my cook time versus somebody else's cook time is gonna be totally different. So you have to play around with your air fryer to see where it sits as in what you're cooking. Guys, do not touch the basket directly because the basket becomes hot. So anywhere out here is fine, but the minute you pull it out, anything back here is gonna be going to be warm over. It says do not turn the basket upside down because any excess oil has been collected to the bottom. So I showed you guys before that when you have your cook time all the grease goes underneath this um, tray that's in there already. So you're not going to want to flip it over or even if you have fries cooking in here. I've done this before too where I've cooked something and then I kind of just dumped it on a plate for my kids not realizing there's still stuff underneath there that you could get burned with. So be careful with that, because I've done that before. Um, okay, another thing that you need to know about using the air fryer is it's called shaking. So one of the things that you need to do is if you're making french fries, halfway through your cooking time, you're going to open up your basket, you're gonna shake it around so you can go like this or take like um, some kind of, mixing tool or whatever and mix it up and you can do it that way but otherwise you just need to shake it a little bit it says adding a bit bit of vegetable oil to fresh potatoes is suggested for a crispier result so that's when you're going to want to use your oil or your oil spray or cooking spray to help with that so and then it also has general cooking guidelines so they'll give you examples in here on what you can make and what you should set your cook time at. So if you have steak and it tells you the size of the steak, what you need to set it to, and then your cook time is eight to 12 minutes. So these aren't like recipes, but these are just basic guidelines if you're gonna be cooking things. So like, uh, let's see, spring rolls, um, you would set it to 400 degrees for 15 to 20 minutes and then you would shake in between there. So around seven, eight minutes, you're gonna open it up, shake it up a little bit and then put it back in and your air fryer should start right back up in the middle of your cycle. 
So them are some of the things that are in your manual to follow. Some of the settings that are on your air fryer. One, this one right here is going to be a preset. So when you, it depends on what size air fryer you have will determine what your preset will be set to. So if you have a five to seven quart, um, you'll have a preset button. If you have a three quart, you'll also have a preset button. So in the manual right here, it'll show you that if you have a five to seven quart, here's your display. And then if you have a three quart, this is what your display looks like. And then a two quart is right here. And that's what yours is gonna look like. So if I'm showing you some of the things that are on here, you might not have that in your display. This one right here with the fruit on it, that is a dehydration setting. So I've never tried it yet. And I do want to eventually do a video on that. And that I will, um, do maybe like in a couple months or something like that. I'll do that. Here are all the settings for your air fryer. This, like I said, this is a seven quart, so my screen is gonna look a little bit different than yours. All right, so you have fries, shrimp, uh, chicken drums, you have ham, you have like cakes, you have steak, pizza, fish, and then you have the dehydration button right there and I haven't used that setting yet so I will do a video on that another time that one just is a different whole process altogether. the cook time for that it can be like a couple days depending on what you're dehydrating so I will try to experiment with that and um, show you guys how it all turns out with that button but we haven't used all of our buttons on our display. We've used shrimp before, fries before, um, and maybe the pizza button. I'm not sure, I don't remember, but that is what the screen looks like with a seven quart. Okay, so let's see, what else? Um, another thing that you need to know when using your air fryer, it is dishwasher safe, so you can wash it in the dishwasher. A lot of times what I do is just pull out my tray and put it in the sink and wash it down with soap and water. And inside my air fryer, this is what it looks like. I just take a warm washcloth with a little bit of soap and I wash all in here, all down the sides. And then underneath is where your heating coil is. And when you wipe down your heating coils, make sure you unplug your air fryer and then you can um, wash it out that way too, but just don't add a lot of water. You can use uh, vinegar and water if you want to wipe it down with a paper towel and that'll help clean it too. You'll notice after time of using it, you're going to have a lot of grease build up around the rim in here and on your heating coils. So you can just wipe that down uh, and it'll be fine. You're not going to want to get it real wet, but you're also able to just clean it up real quick also. And another thing with using your air fryer, you're gonna wanna wash it out every single time that you use it. You're not gonna wanna have a lot of buildup in there when you're cooking other foods, just because it's gonna uh, make your other things that you're cooking not taste so great. So you're gonna really wanna clean that out at, after each use. Hopefully that helps you guys decide on what air fryer court you want to go with. Um, the smaller, it, you're not gonna be able to fit as much in your basket. And the larger one is gonna give you a little bit more room to work with. Hopefully that helps you guys out with care on how to care for your air fryer and then all the settings for your air fryer, things to look for. If you are gonna purchase one, like I said, smaller size, I showed you um, the screen on what it's gonna look like. So if it's not gonna work for you, then you know this, that a bigger one might help or you just don't need all them settings, you're gonna go with a smaller one. So hopefully that helped with uh, learning more on the Power XL. If you guys have any questions or there was something that I missed, 
you know, just leave them in the comments below and I can help you guys out. If for some reason you guys aren't able to reach me through the comments down below, I do have my email, Instagram, and Facebook down below in the description and you guys can leave me a message there. So hopefully you guys like today's video. Don't forget to give me a big thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.